Depending on the context and purpose of the investigations, a sampling strategy must first be defined. Which drilling technique, which sampling method, for what level of accuracy. Here are the main causes of compound loss or cross-contamination during the sampling phases. The volatilization of pollutants by exposure to air during sampling or a soil deconstruction that promotes contact with the air. Adsorption of pollutants on the walls of a container that is not suitable for sampling or contamination from the sampling equipment in general. Physical and photochemical transformations due to light exposure. Heat. Time. Before gone on site, it is necessary to have clean equipment in accordance with procedures, suitable protective equipment, laboratory sampling bottles with frozen coolers and ice packs. Once on site, prepare the work area and calibrate all the measuring devices. On this particular site, the chosen drilling technique is a dual-tube sampling core to limit soil preserve soil structure and limit their exposure to air. After extracting the core, you have to measure volatile compounds in the soils underneath the liner to guide the sampling strategy. The liner is opened at the last moment just before sampling. Warning. If the detection devices are triggered, wear a volatile protection mask. Remove the ends and scrape the surface of the core to ward off potentially disturbed soils. Leave aside the coarse fractions if necessary. For characterization of pollution by volatile compounds, it is recommended to use the sampling cylinder or the pre-filled bottle of methanol. By default, a glass jar can also be used for volatile compounds but with a risk of loss and therefore underestimating the result. If you are using a vial pre-filled with methanol, visually make sure that the amounts of methanol introduced by the laboratory are sufficient and identical to each other. Remove the soil in one go with the calibrated syringe. Avoid splashing while introducing the soil sample. Clean the top of the vial before closing. Make sure the methanol completely covers the soil. Shake the bottle to obtain a homogeneous mixture. Regarding methanol, it is required that one field blank is performed each day of sampling collection and one additional vial for dry matter. If you use a sampling cylinder, take the sample in one go and make sure to fill it as much as possible. Cut off the excess and clean the ends before closing. If you use a glass jar, sample with a stainless steel spatula without disturbing too much the soils. Transfer quickly to the bottle. Fill it to the brim, without overpacking. Clean the top of the bottle before closing. After sampling, measurements of volatile compounds in bags can be made on residual soils. Whatever the method used, you have to clean the tools and change gloves between samples to avoid cross-contamination. Warning: Photos and notes taken during the investigations are very important to avoid the loss of information and misinterpretation of the results. You have to spend adequate time on these. After each sampling, keep the clearly labeled samples in the cold and dark in the cooler, sufficiently protected to prevent breakage. Quickly dispatch the coolers to the laboratory. For the analyses to be launched as soon as possible, the laboratory must have an analytical command. Mission accomplished because you have preserved the integrity of the sample, limited the loss of volatiles, slowed down the biological degradation process and thus increased the reliability of the results. 
this is good because if we take the example of trichloroethylene, according to an American study, a loss of 10 to 15 percent is observed in just five minutes of exposure to air 90 percent after 30 minutes. In all phases of sampling, the role of the person taking the sample is essential. A reliable and robust protocol must be implemented to ensure traceability and repeatability of the samples.